With their unique striped orange fur and long striped tails, tigers are very recognizable. In the delta regions of India and Bangladesh resides the killer beasts of the east, the Bengal tigers, India's proclaimed national animal. The Panthera tigris is the biggest, nastiest, and most deadly predator of the big cat family in India. A full-grown Bengal tiger can be up to 3 meters long, including its tail, and he weighs over 250 kilograms, whereas a female Bengal tiger is only 10 kilograms and 8 feet long, including its tail. These tigers are extraordinarily strong and can even drag their prey nearly half a mile, even when their prey is heavier than themselves. The kinetic impact of their blindingly rapid surprise attacks can break heads and crush ribs. Once they have their prey in their grasp, these tigers rake their victims with claws that can tear through three to four inches of flesh and bite with fangs that might shred to bone. Being fierce in nature, the royal Bengal tigers aren't as friendly in nature and they tend to lead a solitary life, except in winters when they can be seen in groups of three or four. These tigers are great runners and swimmers with enormous retractable claws that help them to climb and to kill prey. The two most prevalent varieties are the white Bengal tiger and the golden tabby. The black pigment on the stripes of the golden tabby and snow white tigers is suppressed, giving the effect of nearly stripelessness or ghost striping. Both are caused by the same gene variation, however. The Bengal white tiger grows larger and quicker than their yellow and orange peers. Having a good vision and hearing, their stripes give them cover as they hunt their prey. These predators might consume up to 30 kilograms of flesh at a time, and then go for up to three weeks without meals. When a female tiger is ready to mate, she'll mark her territory with her urine. When a suitor arrives, they mate for a couple of days until the male returns to his domain. Females are entirely in charge of cub raising. Much like the Sumatran tiger, these tigers mate all year, although most of their offspring are born between April and December. Female tigers go through a gestation period of about 3.5 months, and mothers typically bear litters of up to six babies. Births take place in sheltered spaces such as tall grass, caverns, and dense bush. Tiger cubs are playful from birth, and they remain curious throughout their lives. They're fully dependent on their mother for food from birth to one year. While they're capable of killing smaller prey at the age of one year, they're still extremely vulnerable to stronger predators like hyenas and lions. The cubs become entirely independent at the age of two. Male cubs leave their birthplace and they set out to find their own territory. The tiger cub has more stripes than an adult, and if not, they might become another animal's supper. The tiger cub's first set of teeth are temporary, much like ours, and they're replaced by an adult set approximately 2.5 months after birth. Newborn tigers breastfeed their mothers for three to six months before adopting solid foods at the age of two months. The lifespan of these predators in the wild is roughly 15 years. They become weaker as they age, and catching prey becomes difficult. Those tigers in captivity typically live for 20 to 25 years, barring disease or unforeseen events. Bengal tigers, like all other tiger species, are carnivores. They hunt medium and large-sized prey, like wild boar, deer, nilgai, and water buffalo. They sometimes hunt upon smaller creatures such as hares, monkeys, or peacocks, as well as carrions. They've also been known to take other predators as prey, notably leopards, wolves, jackals, foxes, crocodiles, and D-holes. Although these predators are not certainly part of the Bengal tiger's diet, there are also indications that these tigers will plan strikes on rhinos and elephants under unusual circumstances. Despite their dangerous beauty, Bengal tigers don't prey on humans under normal circumstances. But if you tamper with them, they might come after you. These monsters have excellent memories and they never forget a face that they see. Their memory is more acute than that of humans and other animals. Never roaring, they hiss and they fluff when they battle other tigers. However, by the early 20th century, conditions on the Indian subcontinent had drifted far beyond normal. 436 victims, a seven-year reign of terror, holding the record for the greatest number of fatalities by a single animal. The most fatal of her species was the Champawat tigress. 
For nearly four years, the Champawat devil had terrorized the little town between Champawat and Pali. Despite being forced out of a small region of Nepal, the tiger's reign of terror showed no signs of slowing down. The tiger's merciless predation caused entire towns to flee. But what made this tiger so hungry for human flesh? During the time when tiger numbers were drastically decreasing due to the British bounty, the rate of tiger assaults and man-eaters increased. One such man-eater was labeled as the Devil of India. The tigress was shot in the face at some point in her life, leaving an unsightly mark on her canine. As her death count approached 200, the Nepalese army intervened, forcing her to flee to India, her new hunting ground. The fatal Champawat tigress's reign of terror was put to an end by the hands of Jim Corbett, an unknown railroad employee at the time. Although he had very little interest in poaching tigers, Corbett recognized that it was his responsibility to rid the hill people of a savage threat. The narrative of the Champawat tiger remains a scary tale of darkness and a grave metaphor of nature's agony, a stirring cry against the unfairness of it all, of a tigress who turned man-eater because of the hunter who had harmed her. The Champawat tigress's rampage, according to Mr. Hucklebridge, was caused by a full century of disastrous ecological mismanagement and the Indian subcontinent that pushed the tiger out of the wild forest and grasslands it should have called home. In that light, the Champawat tigress and the people that she killed were victims, as was India. Today, the Bengal tiger population has shrunk to roughly 4,000, stranded in ever-shrinking ecosystems. Based on the biodiversity report by the United Nations, these tigers would be one of a million plant and animal species that could become extinct as a result of human activity over the next several decades. In line with the analysis published in the journal Science Direct, sea level rise, climate change, overdevelopment, and harsh weather could also cause the Bengal tigers to go extinct in the wild. The Bengal tiger subspecies is classified as endangered by the IUCN. Since these tigers are at the very top of the food chain, they are significant to the environment. This results in a trophic cascade in which the top species has an effect on all of the other animals in the food web. When tigers are removed from an ecosystem, the rest of the plants and the animals, they tend to perish as well. Wildlife crime is extensive, and very well-organized poaching gangs continue to keep the illegal trade between India, Nepal, and China going. Even in protected areas, it is challenging to stop criminal activity in search of Bengal tiger body parts and bones because of their high worth. The Tiger Project, which began in the 1970s, has helped to stabilize Bengal tiger populations in some reserve areas. However, overall populations are still declining. The Wildlife Protection Society of India keeps an eye out for poaching and conducts border seizures. Although they may arrest and punish poachers, tracing the source of the operation is difficult, and its origins remain unknown. WWF launched the Save the Tigers Now global campaign in 2012 to combat Bengal tiger dangers and increase the population by 2022. They actively urge a restriction on public contact with tigers in the United States because it promotes needless reproduction, and they persuade individuals to refrain from acquiring wildlife products when traveling abroad. With the help of global communities, the tiger population might slowly climb up the scales. So don't keep those opinions to yourself. Share those thoughts with us about these enormous, cunning, and sharp-witted fatal beasts of the East in the comment section below.